All right, all right. We are back to the Club JG podcast. I want to thank everyone who's been tuning in. Appreciate you guys for the first episode, and um, let's keep it going. I'm going to get to the NBA now. As you guys know, been a Los Angeles Lakers fan all my life. Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. You see him back here? Always got my man with me. I got the Lakers flag hanging. That's how it's always been for me. It's tough times right now. I mean, past few years I've been trying to ingratiate myself to, you know, Take in the LeBron James fans. Take in, you know, all these fans. You know, the brand new fans you've gotten since LeBron James came in. I've learned to accept you guys. Guys, the championship. He's all right with me. You know, I'm, I'm gonna y'all gonna stop that disrespect saying that he's the greatest Laker of all time because y'all ain't about to disrespect Kobe Bryant. Y'all ain't about to disrespect Magic Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the greats, and just a few of the greats that we've had in the history of this Lakers program and their organization. So that's gonna stop there. I just want to address that. So, Lakers right now, as it stands, are currently 19 and 23. That is good for 12th in the Western Conference. <sighs> I've had a tough time dealing with this team, if I'm being totally honest. From the beginning, the moment that I heard that Russell Westbrook was a free agent and that there was a rumor swirling that he could come home to LA, but it was the Clippers or the Lakers, my first thought was. It better be the Clippers. It better be the Clippers. I don't I don't want him here. Look, I love Russell Westbrook. He's a Hall of Famer. Averaging triple double in the league more than once. Hey, that's that's Hall of Fame worthy to me. Championship or not. He was not going to fit with this Lakers team. A lot of people were c- coming at me saying, "No, it's cool. I mean, this this LeBron, he'll figure it out. He figures it out with everybody. He's the greatest of all time. He's the greatest who ever lived." I said, you're not hearing me. This will not work. It won't. And and you know what? When it happens and it doesn't work, you all become mad to me saying, you was right. You was right. In 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 the southern accent, you was right. I know I was right. I I played basketball for a good amount of years, guys. I watch a lot of it, too. So I kind of understand how some things work and how things may not work. Kind of how it goes, right? So anyway, fast forward. Russell Westbrook is coming to L.A. He's a Laker now. I'm just sitting right here looking at ESPN like this. What are you doing? You idiots. What are you doing? And Le- and LeBron goes ahead and does a little Instagram post. You know, quoting everyone saying, it won't work. I say, yo, it's not going to work. And you're going to see how. Last year. Lakers, Lakers didn't make the playoffs. Got blown out, got you know knocked out in the playoff in in the play in, right? Got knocked out in the play in. That's pretty. That's pretty bad. That's not. That's not up to the Lakers standards, man. Look, we trying. We're trying to separate ourselves from the Boston Celtics. They retire right now in championships. We we don't do that. Respect the Boston. Larry Bird, KG, Paul Pierce, Kevin McHale, the Chief. I know. My, I know a little bit of history with the Celtics too. They're my rival. I respect them. Like I respect the Pittsburgh Steelers, but just absolutely can't stand them. I'm a, I'm a true enemy. I'm not a false friend when it comes to the Celtics or the Pittsburgh Steelers. I am a true enemy. I truly hate you, <laughs> but I respect you. We're trying to separate ourselves from them right now. This right here ain't getting it done. You know where the Boston Celtics are right now? 31-12 and 12 in the Eastern Conference. Number one. Best record in the NBA. How about that? What are we doing, Lakers? What are we doing? 19-23. and 23. Ain't good enough, man. This team, you gotta this team has to get blown up. I can't say this. this team has to get blown up. You you can't bring in Patrick Beverly and let go of Taylor Horton Tucker, who was probably your best off ball scorer outside of LeBron James from the wing. And we gotta address the fact that Anthony Davis is is, is have is, is bad luck when it comes to him staying on the floor. It's not a knock against him. I don't make fun of people who who get hurt consistently. There's people out there who have made jokes about him. You know, even the great Charles Barkley, you know, went ahead and called him street clothes. Because he's always in street clothes on the bench and everything. I get it. But it's not funny. I mean, the, the guys just had bad luck. He's a, he's a phenomenal basketball player. One of the greatest, like, power forwards we've seen to play this game. I actually, you know, had, had, to, I had, a, I had a time where I played against Anthony Davis at, at Kentucky. It was awesome. Uh, I think it was my last year at Penn State. We played at the Hall of Fame Classic in Connecticut. It was us against Kentucky. There was all this talk about Anthony Davis being the number one draft pick and all that. I was like, all right, let's check it out. Let's see what we got. Yeah. 
Yeah, <laughs> he was it. But he also had a hell of a team around him too. Like we're talking about Marcus Marcus Teague, Deron Lamb. I think it was Darius Miller at the time playing small forward. Terrence Jones, who was an absolute beast at power forward. And then Anthony Davis. You had a championship caliber team right there. And I think they did, if I'm not mistaken, I think they did win the championship that year. Um, that was my uh, sports center moment in my college career where I made the top 10. Not the top 10 that you're thinking, the other one. Yeah, sports center is not top 10. <laughs> that happened. So basically, uh, I got a dump off from one of my friends and I uh, tried to go up and dunk it. Because, you know, I was trying to be more aggressive going into the half the halftime mark. I got stuffed. But caught the ball, laid it up, finished it, half over. So I was like, you know what? I'm running, I'm running to the locker room. I'm thinking, you know what? I'm good. Because I got it and I made the layup, I think I'm good. Wrong. The next morning. And now for our not top ten and number nine, here's John Gray. Oh, my God. I put my head down instantly because I knew everyone was going to see it. Everyone was going to see it back home in Baltimore. Everyone was going to see it on campus. My girlfriend at the time probably didn't see it. I'm like, oh, my God. I thought I was good. I thought making a layup might be straight. Wrong. <laughs> Can't get rid of stuff. But I learned a lot about Anthony Davis that game. I mean, I, I, looked, I mean, he was just – the way that he impacts the game, especially on the defensive end, is like just – we see why he's the number one pick. He's a great player. He just has not been able to stay healthy. And there's no, like, real support for that. I think Thomas Bryant has come in and, and, and been admirable. You know, he's filled, in, he's filled in for them nicely. He's brought energy. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, same thing. Great energy great energy on the wing. This team just can't shoot. It's just, there's no way around it. This team can't shoot. It's really bad. And the way that the NBA is, the way that the NBA is structured right now, and you've got to be able to shoot to win games. It's just it's flat out, that's how you win. LeBron James can't be your best three-point shooter on the team, or Anthony Davis. They, they can't be your best three-point shooters and expect to win. I'm just going to run through a few of these numbers here. And they're actually better than I thought, <laughs> amazingly enough. So right now, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read a three-point I'm just gonna read three point percentage right now. Got LeBron James at 28%. Anthony Davis, 29%. Russell Westbrook, 29%, which is actually a step up from what we were seeing in the beginning of the season. That's how bad it was. And then we got Lonnie Walker, the fourth, who I just mentioned, 38%. Schroeder, 36%. Thomas Bryant, 42. All right. I mean, he don't really take that many threes. He takes, takes one three a game. These are guys that are taking like four or five threes a game. It's not great. Austin Reeves, I'm a fan of his. I like him, 36%. Troy Brown, supposed to be a shooter, 35%. Patrick Beverly, don't know why we did this, but hey, 33%. Max Christie, well, Max Christie has some promise. I got to say that. He's currently shooting 43%. Do I think LA is going to get a trade done? Honestly, man, I don't, honestly, Miles, I don't know if they are because the best tradable asset that you have is LeBron James. I don't think anyone really wants to take Russell Westbrook's contract right now. And Anthony Davis, like, he's just got too many question marks. Like, he's a great player, but the teams are probably concerned, like, hey, is he going to be on the floor? He's already been. He's already going to be out until mid January. So who else on this team do you really think is a tradable asset? I don't think it's Patrick Beverly. I don't think it's Reeves. Reeves can play a little bit. He actually got some All Star votes. Funny enough, Schroeder. Schroeder's been around the block a few times. I mean, I can I can see maybe a team will pick him up if we waive Dennis Schroeder. I'm not sure that people would actually trade for him and give up assets for him. The most tradable asset is 38 year old LeBron James. I mean, hey, look. The longevity, just the sustained greatness that he's had. We haven't seen this before from anyone. I will admit that openly. Still not putting him over Michael Jordan. Sorry. And we'll save that for another show because I'm not about to get into it with all these LeBron lovers. Look, he's, a, he's one of the greatest players we've ever seen. Again, sustained greatness for 20 seasons is incredible. He looks just as good now, as he, if not better, than he was 10 years ago when he was 28. It's amazing. I don't know what this guy does as far as the training regimen or what he does for his, with his body. It's phenomenal. It's something to definitely marvel at. And it's just, you know, it's something that a lot of young players, I think, today can really, can really learn from to keep. Because this man, has been, this man has, has, been, has been available as well as playing well. He's been available. He's not missing games. He's not missing seasons off of freak injuries or anything like that. He's doing everything he can to make sure that his body is, is in shape and ready to go for a long season. It's something, it's something to actually really appreciate. Because we don't have a lot of that. We have guys like Kawhi Leonard, load management. 
you know, stuff like that. Guys are just like finding ways to miss games, miss time off work. Kyrie Irving, different reasons. I won't get into that right now, but he's found reasons to miss games. It's just flat out. So I, I give LeBron James a lot of credit for that. I think it's very much to be commended. I hope that more players follow his lead because we're going to miss him. We're going to miss him when he's gone, when he retires. I hope that we do get to see him play at least one season with his son, Bronny, who uh, just had a senior night the other night. Um, we're not sure where, we're not sure where he's going to college just yet. Um, we've heard rumors of Ohio State. We heard, we heard, he, we heard he visited Maryland even. Hey, Terps. We don't know if that's going to happen. I think, I think everyone thinks they'll probably go to Ohio State or somewhere out in California. Nothing wrong with that. You know I love me some California. If y'all know me long enough, y'all know I love me some California. San Diego especially. Shout out San Diego. Love, love my people there. Yeah, and that's where we are with the Lakers, man. I just, I just think um, if we're going, if the Lakers are going to make a run, they have to find a way to just. I don't know how they're going to do it. They got to find a way to trade some of these guys away and get some shooters. Like Buddy Hill should be a Laker. Miles Turner should be a Laker. There's no, re- there's no rhyme or reason why these guys are not Lakers right now because we decided to stick with the plan. I don't know what plan Rob Palenka has right now. I don't know what the plan was bringing this team together to begin with. What were they thinking? Did they really think this was going to work? The way the league is constructed now, we just saw the Golden State Warriors win a championship. They got shooters. That's why. That's why they're so good because with the ball movement because they're spacing everywhere. Curry, Thompson, Jordan Poole. You, you, you sprinkle in Draymond Green, ultimate playmaker, because he's got space. That's that's why that's how they are winning. Teams are trying to copy try to copy that as, as best as they can, but you're not gonna you're not gonna duplicate a Steph Curry and a Klay Thompson shooting backcourt. It's just not gonna happen. This is the a most amazing lethal shooting backcourt we've ever seen, and probably won't see again. Maybe not. I don't think so. That's just something that. And then it's like the Lakers are just not following that. They're doing like literally the opposite. What may, what may have worked in 2020, playing big, you know, working against you know my, the likes of Miami, you know, even the Denver Nuggets, you know, because they had a big, they had a pretty big team and that 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 matchup was pretty good, favoring them as far as their size. But that's not working anymore. Teams are just going to keep packing and then packing and then Westbrook's going to just do a little one-two dribble and pull up, probably hit the side of the backboard or brick it. If he makes, if he if he beats you making threes, I'm taking that all night long. I'm going under every screen, and I'm saying, "Yo, beat me with this." You're not going to the basket. Beat me with that jump shot. I'm going under every single screen that you, that you have. Anthony Davis, he can, he has the ability to beat me anyway. LeBron James, you, you just you just gotta do the best you can and hope he has an off night. Even though I think I still would dare him to shoot threes, I'm going under the screen with LeBron. I'm still gonna do it. Like LeBron, you great, but you want to beat me, you want to beat me doing this. You're not beating me going by doing all this and getting and ones and getting dunks you're not doing that to me that's just me personally like my problem defense LeBron you gotta beat me from three that's where we are the Lakers man 19 to 23 hey long season we're in January right now the all-star break hasn't gotten here yet it's not time to panic on making the playoffs just yet but they better start picking it up or it's gonna get really ugly pretty fast again LA Lakers 19 to 23 on the season 12th in the West. Top eight teams right now, top ten teams right now that are, are in the playoffs and play in. We got the Denver Nuggets at the number one seed at 28 and 13. Memphis Grizzlies, same record, two seed. The New Orleans Pelicans, be on the lookout for them in the playoffs. I'm telling you right now, the New Orleans Pelicans can't get to the Western Conference Finals, at the very least. They are good. I saw, I got to see them myself, just you know, going down to New Orleans, spending time with my friends, and uh, checking out LSU and Alabama. Football, we got a chance to check out New Orleans Pelicans for a little bit. Twenty-five and seventeen right now. Zion Williamson, it looks like a, he looks like what we what we hoped he would be a number number one pick. Absolute monster, man amongst boys, and he's a young. He's still very young. What is he? 21, 22 years old now. Beast and grown men right now. That's that's a bad boy. Y'all gotta pay attention to the New Orleans Pelicans. I'm telling you right now. Be on the lookout. Dallas Mavericks at number four seed with Luka Doncic balling MVP level. MVP type performances every night from Luca, including that double overtime win last night against against my Lakers. Luca's a bad boy, and not, 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 not much else to say. They gotta get him some help. They gotta get him somebody during the trade deadline. They, he needs a number two. Porzingis wasn't it clearly because he got all in his feelings, like saying he wanted the ball more. You know, and wanted, basically wanted to take it out of Luca's hands, which wasn't smart. So Dallas smartly traded him away, sent him to DC. DC is currently eighteen and twenty-four. Just a caveat there. Kuzma, you know, uh, DC brunch Kuzma, 
and Porzingis. You know, it's, you know they're doing the thing. I just don't think the Wizards are going to be much, but hey, season's still early. We got the Sacramento Kings. Hey, look, shout out to the Sacramento Kings. My man Kevin Herter, go Terps. Guy is killing it. Him and De'Aaron Fox look really good together. I'm telling you, I'm 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 watching. A lot of people ain't paying attention to the Sacramento Kings right now because we just expected them to just kind of, you know, fall by the wayside and be one of the bottom teams in the NBA. That ain't the case this year. They can play. They got guys. Demontis Sabonis in the, in the post, he's good. He can play. Kevin Herter, bad boy. Red Velvet. That's my guy. Love that, love that guy. He's a great, he's a great dude. Wish him, wish him nothing for the best. He's coming there and really uh, energize this team. Like They look good, man. If you haven't got a chance to check out the Sacramento Kings, check them out, man. L.A. Clippers, who a lot of people think are a threat to the Golden State Warriors repeating. Certainly sitting at number 6, 22 and 21. The Phoenix Suns, they're kind of falling off right now since Devin Booker has been, been injured. They hope to have him back soon because they are clearly, they're they just clearly not the same team without him. Sitting at 21 and 22 right now in the 7th seed. And then the 8th seed, oh, look and behold, the Golden State Warriors, the defending champions. They are finding their strides. An ugly start. I got to say, man, I was never worried. Like, championship hangover happens all the time. No one's really worried about the Warriors, man. Like, missing the playoffs, something crazy like that. Like, look, it's a long season. Guys are getting older. But the young guys and the bench are supposed to, like, produce more than what they have. I was a little surprised when James Wiseman was bumped down to G League. You know, that was a little bit of a surprise for me. Like, we expected more out of him. But, hey, I mean, they're starting to find their stride. Steph Curry, he's that guy. Teammate the same without him. You want to talk about MVPs and most valuable players, man. Like, look, the Warriors are just, like, not the same team without them. And I think um, I, had this, I had this argument the other night with one of my best friends talking about Klay Thompson. How, why is he now on the NBA's top 75 list? And I said that, look, as great as Klay Thompson is, he can't, he's not the guy where it's like, I'm going to give you the ball. Look, give me a bucket. Go win the game for me. It's not about, you know, coming off screens. It's not about, you know, setting a play for him. It's like, yo, give me the give me the basketball and watch me work. That was never that was never Klay Thompson. That was just never his game. That's why that's why, like for me, it's just um I understand why he didn't make the top seventy five. I understand. It's hard, but the guys that were ahead of him at shooting guard in particular, at his position, D Wade, Jordan, Kobe. Those guys are like, hey, give me the ball, get out the way, I'm gonna get us a bucket, and I'm gonna get us a win, I'm gonna get us a championship. I'm gonna do that. That is that's not Clay Thompson. And he's again the second greatest shooter of all time behind one Steph Curry. Lethal backcourt, Hall of Fame, surefire, first ballot Hall of Fame is Clay Thompson. Not not a question at all. Zero plays plays defense and can shoot lights and shoot the lights out. He just doesn't come down to when it's it. Are you that guy? That's going to like, give me the ball and like, give me a bucket. I think he's just not hes not quite there. All right. We are done with sports for the moment. We're going to get into another segment I like to call Lover Boy JG. We're going we're gonna to talk about a little bit of dating advice and a little stuff that I hear in social media nowadays. I'm going to jump right into it. Give me some music. Yes, sir. It's seven o'clock on the dot. I'm in my drop top, cruising the streets. Let me stop. Let me stop. I know I can't sing. <laughs> all right, man. So look, I, I read. So we're all on social media, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. During the week, I, I heard a little thing about, you know, about uh, posting your significant other. And um, there was a question that was being asked that was kind of floating around. Do you think that it's important to post your significant other? On social media, like you know, post them in your story, post them in your regular post, all that stuff, profile picture, all that stuff. And I had a cause. I had a cause for pause because I get it. You know, I understand that um, the your significant other, whether it's your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever the case may be, you don't want you want them to feel wanted. I get it. Me personally, I just kind of sit back and think. Once upon a time, we didn't have this social media stuff we didn't have profile pictures we didn't have 
you know, stories, Instagram posts and all that stuff. We just had us. You know what I'm saying? We just had me and me and me and the girl. My only question that gives me cause of pause is like, look, why are you so hellbent on me on me posting you? Your profile is your profile. You post what you want to post. Me personally, I don't care about I don't care if my girl if my girlfriend posts me. If I had a girlfriend right now. I'm saying I'm single ladies. I'm just saying. I'm I'm single right now. But I'm trying to get off these streets, you feel me? Anyway. I don't care if you if you post me or not. I don't care if we're together and you just I'm nowhere on your Instagram at all. Because this is just me. I'm speaking on how I feel and what I think. I think that as long as I know that me and you are together. As long as I know that me and you are together, we're good. We we exclusive, we're boyfriend and girlfriend, all that stuff. I'm good. It's like the the moment of truth is that, yo, when you go out with your girls and when you go out do your thing, I'm not there. Some dude makes a play. How are you gonna respond? Are you gonna say, No, I'm good, I got a, I'm in a relationship, I can't you know, I got anybody to do this, I got a boyfriend and all that stuff. How are you gonna respond? Because it don't matter if you post it all over your girl's Instagram or if fellas you post your girl everywhere. It don't matter. It really don't. I'm telling you right now from <laughs> I'm telling you right now from experience. People out here don't care about that. They still won't make their move. I've been, look, during college, after college, I'll, I'll, I'll be real with y'all. During college, after college, man, I didn't seen, see girls out doing their thing, man. And then the next day, they posting their boyfriend. Now, I'm sitting, there, I'm sitting there when I see that, I'm like, oh, really? Based off what we saw last night, I'm not sure. I didn't know you had a boyfriend. That's where I'm at with it. We weren't sure about that. So the caption, I, and I can, I remember this. The caption was all like, you know, real lovey dovey, saying like how much she loves her boyfriend. I don't know about that. This is more like a I'm guilty and I'm trying to like cover up right now. And my boyfriend is is so clueless and stupid that if I post this, he'll think everything's fine. Look, if you're married, yeah, yeah, I should be on your profile. My wife should be on my profile if I'm married. I very much understand that part. When you're dating, relationship-wise and all that stuff, there's no ring yet. It's just really, it's bad. It's really bad out here. I remember when I was, I remember, I remember like in my last real relationship, man, I was just like, yo, my girl's on my profile. I'm going out with the boys, hanging out. Girl, girl, walk, girl walk up to me like saying like, "Yo, what's up?" Like, I got a girlfriend. Like, I don't care. She said this to my face. I don't care. My boys is right there. Her her girls are not far back. I'm sitting here like in a, in a in a limbo right now, saying, "Okay, this is not good. I should probably leave." <laughs> my guys in the back saying like, "Yo, do your thing, JG." Like, nah, JG. My, my, my conscience is like, nah, JG, don't do this. The good side. The other side is like, dance with her. Do it. The good side is like, don't do it, JG. Go home. You find, in, that, in that case, you find middle ground. You say like, I'm going to get a drink and just kind of do my thing and then dance. But I'm not going to I'm not gonna pursue that. But I'm telling you, man, it don't matter if how, how many times you post your, your significant other until you got a ring on there. And sometimes even, the, unfortunately, the ring don't even matter. And that's where, that's where I draw the line. That's just terrible. You know, you know you're married, or you know that this person is married. And you're still trying to do that. Come on, man, that's not that's not okay to me. So, bottom line for me is that look, it's your it's your profile. You do what you want to do. You want to have your you want to have a significant other all over your profile. Do your thing. But what matters is how are you guys between each other? How are you guys when this person goes out? When your when your girl goes out with with her girlfriends and has a little has has a couple of beverages. How is she after that? How is she acting after that? Or when you with your boys and you go out, how you how are you with your boys? I want to know about that. That's the important thing right now when it comes to me with relationships, like in posting on social media. Because once upon a time we ain't have the social media stuff, man. We just had we just had the guy and the girl, or the relationship being what it was. I want to be with you. You want to be with me. We good. That's all it was. Now that we got social media, it's all about 
you should be posting me everywhere. You should be, you know, worshiping the ground I walk on. This is what this is what most women will say. You should be worshiping the ground I walk on. I'll save that for another. I'll save that for another segment. But hey, in the, the day, it's about like, do you love each other? Do you want to be with each other, or is this all like kind of just for social media? Because if my attention isn't enough for you, why are you so helping on me posting you? Because now it's like I'm posting you. You basically want you basically saying that my 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 attention is not good enough for you. You should be posting me everywhere so everybody else can look at you. That's how it comes off to me. My my brother, my my blood brother er, Ernie Jr. Birdman, Birdman, Birdman. Just make sure your friendship is stronger or as strong as the relationship. That's real. You ain't friends with your significant other. Like, what do you have? You don't. Do y'all even really know each other? Are y'all like really friends? Are y'all just like doing this for the title, and then trying to like make shift into a relationship? The best relationships are built off of being friends. Like y'all know each other, and it feels right. It's natural. You don't have to like you know. You ain't gotta like dance around and shuffle and everything. It's my sexy dance again. Slow, slow shuffle. No, it's supposed to be simple. I can honestly say with a straight, I can honestly say with a straight face that my last relationship was with one of my best friends. We were just, we were great. It was a beautiful time. We enjoyed each other's company. It was just every time we got together, it was just cool. It was natural. That's how it should be. So now, so, now, so now I got me over here thinking, like, you know, thinking about, you know, I need, I need, to, look, I need to look for another relationship. And I am. I've been, sing, I've been single for a good amount of years now. Like, you know, I kind of, I found, I found me. I'm, I'm confident in who I am now. I think I'm ready for, like, a good, a real relationship with a, with a good lady. It's got to make sure she checks out the boxes and make sure that uh, she gets to my family. Because my family, my family don't like you or my, my, my sisters. They know who they are. My, pe- my people's. And man, they, they they protect me, man. So you gotta like you gotta pass the test with them too. But uh, yeah, be good, be good to each other. Don't let social media take over your relationship. Don't let it dictate h- how your relationship should be or what you should be doing or not doing. The important thing is you're you you two are on the same page and you two have agreement and understand each other. That's all I got for y'all this week, man. I appreciate everybody hopping on the Club JG podcast. I'm going to see y'all next Friday at 7. Y'all have a good night, good weekend. Go Ravens. Since he's going down, I'm picking them off a of straight emotion. Blind faith! Let's go. Let's see you guys later, man. Y'all have a good